from the book of the prophet Zechariah, the ninth chapter, beginning at the ninth verse. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off. He shall speak to the nations, speak peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of their covenant, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today, I declare that I will restore double to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read responsibly the psalm. (laughs) Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go through them, and I will praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, through which the righteous shall enter. I will praise you, for you have answered me, and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord, and he has given us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, I will exalt you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. Good morning to all. And and we just heard that that, that, uh, beautiful passage from Psalm 118, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Well, we're going to sing that song right now. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. for you. Jesus was crucified for you. Jesus was crucified for you. is risen from the tomb. Jesus is risen from the tomb. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus is risen from the tomb. Jesus has freed you from your sin. Jesus has freed you from your sin. Jesus has freed you from your sin. Hosanna, Hosanna. Jesus has freed you from your sin. One more time, blessed is he. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It's a lot of fun waving palms, isn't it, Joy? The palms remind us that, that Jesus did come into Jerusalem humbly on a donkey. And we have a little donkey up there, and next to a cross, the, the cross made out of the palms, for that's the reason that Jesus went to Jerusalem, right? He went to suffer and to die, to pay for all our sins. But just as he told his disciples, this is going to happen, what happened after three days... He will rise up again after three days. That is the good news, that he just didn't stay dead, but he rose again. And so all of us who raise up our palms in, in thanksgiving to God know that one day we will raise our palms in heaven, around the throne of the Lamb. Because as Jesus rose from the dead, everyone who believes in Jesus will also be in heaven with him. That's why Jesus died because he paid for our sins so that we can go to heaven. That's the good news of this day. So we wave our palms. We tell others the good news. We tell others that Jesus has done it all for us. Have peace in your heart as you go now and, and wave your palms with your life, giving all glory to God. Amen. The epistle reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Christians at Philippi. In the second chapter, we begin at the fifth verse. Paul wrote, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant, and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and those on the earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. <clears throat> The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. The next day a great multitude that had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these were written about him and that they had done these things to him. Therefore the people who were with him when he called Lazarus out of his, out of his tomb and raised him from the dead bore witness. For this reason the people also met him, because they had heard that he had done this sign. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, You see that you are accomplishing nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Now there, was a certain, there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn Andrew and Philip told Jesus. But Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain." He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. My soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Therefore the people who stood by and heard it said that it had thundered. 
Others said, an angel has spoken to him. And Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the rule of this world will be cast out. And if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. Then he said, signifying by what death he would die. This he said, signifying by what death he would die. The people answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. And how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus said to them, A little while longer the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may have become sons of light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. But although he had done so many signs before them, they did not believe in him, that the word of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled which he spoke. Lord, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because Isaiah said again, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they should see with their eyes lest they should understand with their hearts in turn, so that I should heal them. These things Isaiah said when he saw his glory and spoke of him. Nevertheless, even among the rulers, many believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, praise to you, O Christ. Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our text for this Palm Sunday is from our Gospel reading, John chapter 12, verse 23. But Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come 
that the Son of Man should be glorified. Here ends our text. The hour has come to die. The hour has come to be glorified. Jesus' response was to a couple of Greeks that came who wanted to see him. They were coming to the feast of the Passover, believing Greeks. And they came with express purpose also to see Jesus. They made this request to Philip, who then related to Jesus also with Andrew. This brings to mind a very similar incident that began, that, that we remember from Jesus' birth. When the Gentiles from the east came to worship him, seeking the, the king of the Jews. At both Jesus' birth and his death, Gentiles sought him. On this Palm Sunday, we Gentiles too seek him and are invited to worship the king of the Jews, the king of Israel, the, the son of David, the Messiah, and wave our palms in Hosanna's to the Lord, our Lord, who rode into Jerusalem for you and for me to give his life so that we would have life. Hosanna to the son of David. Literally, that means help the son of David, help the Messiah, help the Messiah succeed in his mission, in his purpose to save the world. Hosanna, may it be. May it be. The Messiah's success is absolutely necessary, absolutely necessary for Jews and Gentiles alike. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We speak of glory today. We don't have glory because we have fallen short, breaking his commandments. So Paul says in Romans chapter 3, But now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, through faith in Jesus Christ. To all and on all who believe. The righteousness of Christ is something apart from us, outside of us, given to us through faith, to Jews and to Gentiles, to all people who would put their eyes on Jesus and see Jesus as the Messiah. For there is no difference, Paul says, for all have sinned, all have fallen short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus justified freely. What Jesus did on the cross justifies the whole world and pardons their sins. This is how Jesus was glorified by his death and his resurrection and how he brings glory to each of us through faith in him. What was Jesus' response to, to the Greeks that, that then Jesus spoke to, to Philip and Andrew? Basically, he just simply said, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. It was a response of comfort and assurance that the Son of Man was going to be glorified, not just for some, but for all. There was no distinction being made here between Jews and Gentiles. There was no need to make the distinction that he had to first find the lost sheep of Israel and then also bring in later the, the lost sheep of the Gentiles into his fold. No, the hour had come for the universal atonement of all people, Jews and Gentiles alike. John's Gospel includes this story of the Gentiles to remind us that Palm Sunday is about all sinners being saved. Palm Sunday is an invitation to you and to me to believe that Jesus had rode into Jerusalem for us, that it is our hour of salvation. Yes, Jews and Gentiles, Jesus is saying, you will see Jesus this week. You will see him glorified by his serving of his Father's will by dying on the cross for the sins of all people. You will see him on the cross. You will see him laid in the tomb. And you will see him three days later as he rose in victory from the dead. Jesus continues by saying, Father, save me from this hour? What a question. But for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. For both Jews and Gentiles to be saved, this hour, this hour of Jesus' glorification could not be avoided. There was no other way to save all mankind. 
This coming into Jerusalem, lowly riding a donkey, was foretold by the prophet Zechariah, as we read in our Old Testament reading in Zechariah 9, and it had to be fulfilled. Jesus became a man, incarnate, true man. He healed people of their diseases. He raised the dead, as we, as we hear in a few verses earlier in our text, raising Lazarus from, from the dead. He gave food to the people who were hungry. He did marvelous signs. But was he supposed to just then go back to heaven? Was that all? No, this hour had come. This hour had to come for the greatest disease yet had to be healed, had to be cured for all people. The Father's voice from heaven approved of all that Jesus had done so far, approved of all his miracles, of his serving of his Father. His name had been glorified, but there remains more to be done. I will glorify it again when Jesus died on the cross. This hour doesn't appear to have much glory in it, in our eyes. Jesus would be betrayed. He would be mocked, spit upon, whipped. These things Jesus foretold to his disciples. We heard that last week on his journey into Jerusalem. He said this very clearly, and now he's in the temple speaking to, his, to the people after entering Jerusalem on the donkey. And this is when the Father's voice is heard giving testimony that what is about to happen is for God's glory and for man's good, for all our good. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the rule of this world will be cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. This, he said, signifying by what death he would die. For our sake. For our sake, we hear this, these words spoken to your hearts this morning. We hear the Father once again approving of His Son's work. This was the third time that we've heard the Father's voice at His baptism, at His transfiguration, and now at His death. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased, well pleased in the work of salvation which He is accomplishing. This gives us assurance that all is going to plan. It's going to look very, very bad on Good Friday. But this was the only way to save all mankind. When Jesus is lifted up from the earth, he says, this is the only way that he could save all people. This is the way that he draws all people to himself. His sacrifice forgives all men's sins, Jews and Gentiles. It includes you and includes me. The Lamb of God is sacrificed for all. The hour had come. Our salvation has come. Thanks be to Jesus. Sometimes in our lives, there are hours that we don't want to face, right? Hours of reckoning that we don't look forward to. Most people don't like to, to face the hour of tax time. Once again, the IRS has postponed it one more month, so we've got a little bit of a leeway there. Some people don't like to go to the dentist or to the doctor because they might possibly hear bad news. Some people don't like to take exams, don't like to take tests. Some people are putting off receiving the vaccine. Yet the hours that we delay the most are nothing compared to the hour that Jesus faced, that he faced alone. He didn't delay, he didn't procrastinate. For this purpose Jesus came and Jesus faced the hour that we should have all faced. This is the hour that each of us should have faced, our souls reckoning for our sin. We should have faced the wrath of the Father and be sentenced to eternal condemnation for our trespasses. But we didn't, because Jesus did. He took all our blame, our guilt, our punishment, so that we would receive glory, His glory. We don't deserve glory, but Jesus humbled Himself so that we would be exalted. What an amazing message is the Christian message. The Christian message of faith, isn't it? By his death, Jesus conquered the devil, conquered the sinful world. Listen again to Jesus telling the people these very important words. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. He's speaking of the devil. By his death, the devil would be conquered. He could no longer accuse Jesus' followers of sin. For Jesus is judged guilty and the world is judged innocent. 
Sinners are glorified then through Jesus, through his work on the cross, as they receive this great work through faith. The hour has come, Jesus says, for the, for the grain of wheat to go into the ground and die. It must die in order for it to bear much grain. Jesus is that grain that died, and we are the grain that is bearing fruit. Jesus says, he who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my Father will honor. Anyone, Jews and Gentiles alike, he who loves his life, he who loves his own sinful life, will lose his life eternally, Jews and Gentiles alike. But he who repents and follows Jesus will keep his life or her life eternally. The Father promises to honor the believer. He promises to honor each of you. What does this mean? It means that the believer is the new grain that what, what was produced when the kernel died, the grain of grain kernel died when Jesus died. The believer in Jesus receives the blessing of what Jesus has won on the cross, eternal glory. Paul says in Colossians chapter 3, For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Look how our life is connected to Jesus. When Christ, our life, his life is our life. His victory is our victory. His glory is our glory. When he appears in glory, so also we shall appear in glory. That is how the Father honors us, by giving us faith to believe and giving us the victory. Our future glory is connected to Jesus' glory through our baptism, that just as Jesus was raised from the dead, so also we should walk in newness of life. We know this from Romans chapter 6. So as we follow Jesus and raise our palms of praise to him, we know that as Jesus suffered, we too will suffer on behalf of him. And this also brings glory to God. And it being, gives us rejoicing in our hearts that we would be counted worthy to suffer with our Lord. So Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, For our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, our light affliction is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Again, in 1 Corinthians 10, Paul says, Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Our hour of suffering in this world is light compared to the glory which will be revealed in heaven. In heaven, we will raise our palms around the throne of the Lamb, raise them and sing the victory song that the Lamb of God has conquered for all sin has given us eternal life. All glory and honor to the Lamb. All glory and honor to Jesus who was steadfast in his work, his purpose of coming to this very hour of salvation. And while we wait for this final victory song around the throne of God, the Holy Spirit strengthens our faith. As we know from Romans chapter 8, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children than heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Romans 8, 16 through 18. Wow, so much to look forward to. So much to rejoice over on this Palm Sunday. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. All glory be to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasseth all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We rise for the singing of the offertory. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Can
Bless me that away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. We pray. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we give thanks for all your goodness with which you bless your whole creation. Above all, however, we give you thanks that you sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to be our King, your suffering servant, whose death delivers us and all believers from sin, death, and hell. Give us your grace that we be faithful in our walk and in our hope, love, and worship. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Inspire your whole church throughout the world to rightly hear and follow Jesus, our eternal King and Lord, in humble faith with thanksgiving. Give wisdom and grace to all pastors that they give themselves to a living and lively proclamation of your law and gospel, through which you work true saving repentance and faith in many. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give your grace, forgiveness, wisdom, blessing, and guidance to all who bear the offices of government in our nation and throughout the world. Lead them to the faithful exercise of their authority for peace and justice and for the defense and liberty of all people, especially the most vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give peace and patience, comfort and healing to all who suffer illness or adversity or who are in sorrow or need, especially we lift up to your loving care. Our brother in Christ, Dale Mooring, we pray for, for Linda. We also pray for Evelyn in her upcoming search. We, we pray for Shirley. We pray for all those who are, are needing your, your healing hand. Deliver all who are endure persecution for faith in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you in, in your church on earth, who now rest from their labors. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joys of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray on this day, dear Lord, that, that you would also bountifully refresh the earth for our farmers here in the valley. We pray that you would give rain to them as, as they need it. Dear Lord, we, we know that you, you are merciful and, and know all of our needs even before we know them. We ask this in, in Jesus' name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray also for those who are suffering affronts for your name's sake. We pray for those who are suffering, for, for those who have not kept the Eighth Commandment. We pray that you would give them strength and healing and give them hearts willing to forgive as you have forgiven us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his favor upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Hosanna, Lord. 